This is the dimension of imagination. Great atmosphere on a crisp, cool Saturday night at Williams Bryce for the 4 and 4 Florida Gators against the 4 and 4 South Carolina Gamecocks on SEC Saturday night. Welcome to SEC Network College Football, presented by T-Mobile. Just love being here, here in an environment like this with my good buddy Matt Stinchcomb and Alyssa Lang on the field. I'm Taylor Zarzer. Both of these teams, like I said, are four and four, though both fan bases don't feel as good about those four and fours. Yeah, you can see the two records, and they mirror one another, but the expectations coming into the season, very different. South Carolina very much anticipating a rebuilding phase, but Florida on the heels of a division championship and then playing so well versus Alabama, you can feel a little bit of a letdown around that program. Both of these teams looking to regain footing here two-thirds of the way through the season. All right, let's, so let's talk about the Gators. The Gators were 8-1 and one at one point last season, squarely in the college football playoff picture. Dan Mullen, you saw how he did in his first 35 games. But since that 8-1 and one start last year, Stinch, four and seven. What happened? You know, a lot of it was the departure of a lot of that offensive generation, and they knew that there was an injury. We don't know if we'll see him here tonight. Now Emory Jill unstable at that position, and it'll be a question mark coming into this game. Yeah, they need Emory to throw it to the Gators tonight and run the football like he's done so brilliantly throughout the entire season. Alyssa Lang, the problem is around Emory Jones, there are some Gators that don't feel so good. Yeah, and even Emory Jones himself, it's been a very different last 10 days for both of these two teams. Dan Mullen telling us this week, on average, 20 to 30 guys missed practice per day because of the flu going around the team. Some guys even traveled down separately, and then leading up to kickoff, he sent a few backup players home. Now, Emory Jones did take an IV before this game to try to make sure he was hydrated and good to go, but they will have some flu-like symptoms through Throughout the team that we'll see if are if they're apparent tonight now for South Carolina they're coming off their bye week and they needed all the time in the world to figure out who was going to be their starting quarterback a question we've been asking all season for South Carolina now they'll turn to who used to be the third stringer Jason Brown the transfer from St. Francis will get his first start tonight guys Marcus Satterfield the offensive coordinator saying that he's a gunslinger he can move the pocket and he can really extend plays with his legs so look for South Carolina to throw the football a lot tonight yeah and Alyssa he's in there because Luke Doty injured his foot and then of course you had Seb Nolan injure his knee. Nolan's not ready to be back. Doty's out for the rest of the season. It's been a spinning turnstile at the quarterback position for South Carolina all season. Zeb Nolan, a grad assistant, has been well documented, comes into the end of the year forced into service due to the injury to Luke Doty. Then he himself is injured versus the University of Georgia. Doty comes in. Doty goes back out. That last drive versus Vanderbilt, Zeb Nolan leads the Gamecocks to a victory, only to give way to Jason Brown in the fourth quarter versus AM. And thus, the adventure continues for South Carolina at the quarterback position. Don't you just love the Southeastern Conference on a Saturday night? 55 degrees. A little bit of wind to deal with tonight. That could be a factor in the kicking game. South Carolina won the toss and deferred Florida will receive Gators lead this series in the 42nd meeting 29 9 to 3 each of the last eight have been decided by 14 points or less we got the head ball coach in the house tonight Steve Spurrier <laughs> we got Frank Beamer in the house we got the commissioner Greg Sankey the stars are out on a Saturday night at Willie B Mitch Jeter will kick off and send it deep to the Gators with Malik Davis standing back at the goal line. And Mr. Jeter's having some trouble keeping that football on the tee. It is breezy here tonight. Thankfully, the rain stayed away. But those flags atop the uprights are whipping. It stays up there for Mitch Jeter, and we're ready to go. A 
Xavier Henderson calls for the fair catch, and Florida will start at the 25-yard line. Well, Stinch, you said it. Emory Jones is getting the start for the Gators tonight, despite not feeling 100%. I think everybody's been dealing with the flu in the southern part of the country this week. He's a redshirt junior from LaGrange, Georgia. In the last five games, he's completed over 70% of his passes. He leads all of college football quarterbacks with over 5.7 yards per rush. Certainly think he'll use his legs tonight. But he uses his arm on the first play, and he misses Malik Davis on what should have been a play for getting it should have been a handful of yards for the Gators instead it's second and ten. Yeah, for Emory Jones, in talking with Dan Mullen, admires his mentality and approach, physically not at his best, and obviously lost that starting job just a week ago to Anthony Richardson versus Georgia. Jones fakes the handoff, throws across the middle, and it's caught by Justin Shorter, the Penn State transfer from a couple of years ago, his 49th catch. It's a 20-yarder. They need Shorter to have a big game tonight, Stinch. They're down a couple of receivers, too. He's definitely a guy that the Gamecock defense is highly aware of, the most targeted receiver in this Gator offense. Trent Whittemore's not playing tonight. Neither is Jamarcus Weston. That ball is thrown just short of the 50, and it's shorter again. He gets four more. Gators and Dan Mullen come out throwing on this first possession. Yeah, interesting, too, coming into this game, because South Carolina, their mindset was going to be, we're going to make the Florida quarterback, whoever it is, play quarterback, be a passer. So far, the Gators more than accommodating with their play call. Here's a fake again, and it's into the breadbasket of Jacob Copeland. Copeland, though, had defensive backs with him there, as you see Marcellus Dial, the sophomore from Woodruff, South Carolina. So they run play action this time off a counter look. Want to see if they had a run defense-minded team in Gamecocks leaning downhill and instead well defended, although Copeland could have come up with that catch. All passes for Dan Mullen's offense on this first drive. The Gators are 42%, rounding up to 43, if you will on the season. Jones throws back. It's Copeland short of the first down. It's a pickup of three, and it's Dial again. Interesting design on that play. Kind of faking the option to the left, and then spinning back around to try to hit Copeland. See if he kind of got lost by the defense, and instead, couldn't pick up a block out there on the edge. Interesting, too, to note some Gators with some new faces in there at right tackle. Michael Tarquin in there for Gene Delance in this game. Jeremy Crawshaw is punting. Josh Van is waving his hand, and it drops in front of him, and it'll be downed at the 13-yard line. That's a 33-yard punt for the Aussie, and the Gamecocks are led out on offense by Jason Brown. As Alyssa said, he's making his first FBS start, the fifth-year senior from Fredericksburg, Virginia, that had a great career for the St. Francis Red Flash. He set a Northeast Conference record two years ago, throwing for over 3,100 yards and 28 touchdowns. He's been a great teammate to Zeb Nolan and Luke Doty. Now it's their turn to cheer on Brown. Saquandre White in the backfield behind him as Brown is under center. And it's a flea flicker for Brown on the first play. And it's a completion out to the 30-yard line as Van makes the catch. You think a new quarterback, heavy run set. Two tight ends, you run heavy play action, the heaviest you can. You actually hand it off, flip it back. It was actually relatively well defended. The Gators had secondary defensive backs in place. Then instead, Van kept working to the sideline. Well-placed ball from Jason Brown to open this game. A pickup of 16 yards. It's White, and he gets up to the 33-yard line, picking up a few. White, the fifth-year senior, started his career at Florida State. It has been running back by committee for the Gamecocks. Here are the guys in front of Brown and White. 
Tyshawn Wanamaker getting the start at right tackle tonight, Stench, over Dylan, Dylan Wanam. Well, that's a spot to watch, especially if we get in a third and an obvious passing down. Maybe matched up with Zachary Carter, one of the better pass rushers for the Gator defense. Second and seven. Again, White looking for space, breaking tackles. First down, Gamecocks out past the 45. You know, Taylor, when we were talking with Marcus Satterfield, the offensive coordinator, play caller for South Carolina, he mentioned White on a couple of occasions, unprompted. They were really pleased with the way he's been running the ball. That is a physical run. He's not a huge guy at 215. You see him kind of Roger Craigin' it through the hole there with the high knees. He's the leading rusher for Shane Beamer's team. Would have used four different tailbacks throughout the season and it's Kevin Harris who was the leading rusher in the whole conference last year on the field and it's a throw by Brown into Florida territory it's the leading receiver Josh Van with his second catch this goes for eight yards you see South Carolina living in this heavy personnel so one back two tight end set and right now Jason Brown could not have started this game off more strongly from the floor to 47. Straight ahead run past the 40. It's Harris for another Gamecocks first down. The junior from Hinesville, Georgia, finally appearing healthy. We were down on the field earlier talking to Shane Beamer. And, you know, who are we going to see? He mentioned White starting the game, but said we would see Kevin Harris early. We fully expect to see Marshawn Lloyd as well. And right now, a strong opening drive by the Gamecock offense. To the Gator 39-yard line as Brown looks over at the Gamecock offensive staff. Harris running for over 1,100 yards, leading the SEC last year. Gets the handoff again and follows the left side of the line down near the 35-yard line. He had a surgery on his back, Harris did, in July. And he's been dealing with ankle issues most recently, as you see his numbers that were so strong last year. But since Shane Beamer also said on the field before, this is the healthiest he's been all season. Yeah, you could tell it's been a slow start, no doubt. You know, COVID slowing him down, obviously a back injury. That'll definitely uh, give you a little bit of hesitancy coming into the season. Kevin Harris maybe just now able to round into form. Now it's Marshawn Lloyd, the third tailback we've seen for the Gamecocks on the first possession. Fake to him, now dumping it off to the big tight end, Nick Muse, and Muse is down to the 31. It's a pickup of three. We bring up second down, Muse with his 13th catch on the season. And the Gamecocks have been without Jalen Brooks since the Tennessee game. And they haven't really been able to get their tight ends incorporated because they needed them in protection. That time able to get Nick Muse a target. Now a third and manageable for this offense. And Gators with a really late substitution there to get their pass rush package in. Yep, three yards on first down, four on second. So third and three. Gamecocks need to get past the Gator 29. Clock down to one. Brown appeared to get it off and fighting to the 30 is Lloyd, but Mahmoud Diabate makes the tackle. It'll be fourth down. Now Parker White's got plenty of leg, but this might be four down ter territory for Shane Beamer. Yeah, there's no hesitancy. And in fact, you, you think right there on the third down, you run the football up the middle. They're probably already pre-decided. Look, we're going to go for it on fourth if he's short. Anything outside of a negative yardage play or tackle for loss, You've got another down to get this conversion. You see the numbers on the season for the Gamecocks. They have to get a full yard here as that yellow line comes in right at the 29. And looks like the Gamecocks will take more time to think about it. Dan Mullen's team desperate for a victory to get over 500. I am now $14,421 in credit card debt. Luckily, my ukulele instructor, Craig, told me about the Tally app. Tally gave me a low interest line of credit to pay off my high interest credit cards. So I'm getting out of debt faster. Get out of debt up to two times faster with Tally. Come in for ingredients. Leave with more to pass down.
right, Jason Brown in his first start for the Gamecocks, three of three to start the game stench. What does the Gamecock offensive staff tell him to do on this fourth and one from the Gator 30? Well, here's what he has at his disposal is something that really the Gamecocks haven't had all season, including with Luke Doty, which is mobility at quarterback. Now you've got a loaded backfield yep. right now. Trey Jones is the fullback in front of Kevin Harris, the tailback on fourth and one, and he follows Jones for the easy first down up to the 25-yard line. How about the block from the 6'3", 305-pound fullback there? The sledgehammer. He's slamming up in there, big boy. Truth is, was great push up front. Javon Gwynn and others to get a nice push right at the point of attack and you see Daquan Newkirk transfer from Auburn a number of transfers littering this Florida Gator roster in too deep They're, I think already down a Tyrone Truesdale for this game he provides depth along that defensive front Newkirk that fourth down play Grabbing at that right. Looks like the trainer's working on that right ankle. He's one of the guys that's had a head cold this week for Dan Mullins Gators. You mentioned Truesdell. Trevez Johnson's out too. Florida thin tonight. Today I am officially $11,754 in credit card debt. Today my teaching assistant turned me out to Tally. Tally gave me a low interest line of credit to pay off my high interest credit cards. So I'm getting out of debt faster. Get out of debt up to two times faster with Tally. Today you have to manage expectations and lower wait times. With IBM you can do both. Unifying apps and data across clouds helps you predict and manage supply chain issues for your business and for your customers. SEC Saturday Night is presented by T-Mobile, the leader in 5G, America's largest, fastest, and most reliable 5G network, and in part by new Coca-Cola Zero Sugar and Wendy's Hot and Crispy Fries. Try the best combo ever today. And those last three minutes and 11 seconds of the first half were disastrous for the Gators. Richardson fumbled. Georgia recovers and scores. Richardson interception. Georgia next play touchdown. Richardson pick six. And just like that, it was 24-0 Georgia instead of 3-0 Georgia. And the game was basically over. It's Florida defense trying to get off the field as Gamecocks have a great first drive going with Jason Brown at quarterback swinging it out to Jaheim Bell. And Bell doesn't get anything. Jadarius Perkins on the tackle. It'll be second down. What about what happened to the Gators at the end of that first half in Jacksonville? They're just a blitz of points there towards the end and obviously a spate of turnovers from a freshman in his first start versus one of the better defenses that you're going to find in college football, certainly this season. But one that hasn't generated a ton of turnovers. But man, the points and just burying the Gators at the end of that first half. On second and 10, it's Marshawn Lloyd, and Lloyd gets up down to the 21-yard line. Trey Dean on the tackle. It's third down for Todd Grantham's defense, the 55-year-old defensive coordinator who's in his fourth season with the Gators, fifth straight year coaching for Dan Mullen. He's taken some scrutiny this year, but it's, the guys are still sacking the quarterback like they always had. Had a big game against Alabama earlier this season. I think all parts of the team haven't performed the way any Gator fan would like. And this is the first time really where they might get a chance to rush the passer. Otherwise we've seen play action passes earlier downs. Now they motion White into the backfield. Down to one on the play clock. Brown plenty of time throws to the end zone and it's dropped down there by Decarion Joyner in the corner amongst cameramen fourth down to Darius Perkins pressure on Brown as he released that pass he's in there for Therese Johnson you see Brown this ball's catchable and Joyner just can't quite 
gather it in. You know, the timing on that route, Joyner had to make up some ground. It was disrupted by Torrance in coverage. Joyner just couldn't bring it in. You see the wind, Parker White dealing with it, moving from left to right, and he squeezes it in there. He's had an outstanding season, the fifth year senior from Mount Pleasant, South Carolina. Gamecocks strike first on a beautiful, cool evening in Columbia. I am now $14,421 in credit card debt. Luckily, my ukulele instructor, Craig, told me about the Tally app. Tally gave me a low interest line of credit to pay off my high interest credit cards. So I'm getting out of debt faster. Get out of debt up to two times faster with Tally. In a world of the unexpected, customers expect simple and personalized. With IBM, you can do both. Automating IT processes across clouds helps you save time so you can make sure your customers' needs are covered. Thanks for dropping by. Thanks for the orange. Let's take a look at Fansville, brought to you by Dr. Pepper. williams Bryce Stadium always delivers. Fans are outstanding here in Columbia. And I have to say, regardless of record, they yeah. always turn out. They do. Yeah. I mean, one of the most loyal and persistent fan bases, right? You know, even in, there was a lot of lean years. You think pre-Coach Spurrier, it did not always go that well, and it was always a tough place to play. That's Malik Davis waiting in his end zone for Mitch Jeter to kick it off with the Gamecocks striking first, and Florida again will get it at the 25-yard line. Coming up next, SEC football final. As you covered with biggest stories of the day and breakdowns of all the games, Dari Noka hosts along with Gene Chizik, Chris Doring, and Benjamin Watson. That's immediately after our game, right here on the SEC Network and the ESPN app. One app, one tap. And I'm starting to scratch my head a little bit at what's happening at Bryant Denny Stadium. LSU 7, number 2, Alabama nothing. Wow. Yeah. See if the Gators start running the football. Not a single rush attempt yet for the Florida offense. Fake to Damian Pierce. It's another throw, and it looks like Jones was hit as he threw. As Jabari Ellis got some pressure on him, second down. Once again, that time, another play action look, trying to get a shot in downfield. Still haven't seen a handoff from the Gators, and Jabari Ellis, as you said, got there right as Emory Jones tries to throw this football. He doesn't get nearly as much on it. You see Ellis hitting Jones' arm. As he was bringing it forward, that ball did not have a chance. So this is play seven for the Gators on offense. And it'll be pass number seven. Jones wide open. It's shorter, and he's inside the 25-yard line. 51 yards for Jones the shorter. Just tell. Dan Mullen is a play caller. He's like, I'm just going to keep throwing haymakers. We'll throw another one downfield. That time protection holds up. Platel just couldn't hang in with Shorter. Now Shorter takes the grab at the line of scrimmage and goes out of bounds inside the 20-yard line to pick up a five. How about the 51-yard catch he had? Clean pocket this time. See him kind of fake there towards the line of scrimmage. Brief, it's like a self-play action. But Shorter just beats the coverage. He had five yards before that ball was even released. That is a big target in number four for the Gators. Second and four in the South Carolina red zone. Swings it out to Pierce. And Pierce inside the 15. First down, it appears, inside the 13. As Carlin's Platel shoved him out. And Florida on the move on offense as they move the chains down near the 12. They're almost compelled to count that as a handoff. Get the running backs involved in some ways other than fakes. That time Pierce, good receiver, out of the backfield, came into this game with 14 catches, able to turn it up and get the first. Damian Pierce stays in the backfield with Jones. Not a run to the end zone, touchdown! It's 
Xavier Henderson, the sophomore from Miami, chomp, chomp the Gators on top. You think Florida anticipated South Carolina thinking stop, run, stop, run? Emory Jones stands tall in the pocket. That's an easy pick it, pitch right there. Darius Rush on the outside shoulder of Henderson. It's just an easy touchdown catch. An emphatic offensive drive for the Gators. Chris Howard attempting the extra point. Florida 7, South Carolina 3. 10 offensive plays, 10 passes so far for the, Gator, for the Gators. Let's go back to the studio, get our first update tonight from Dari Noko. All right, TZ, how about Kentucky at home against Tennessee? Trying to snap that two-game skid. They're down a touchdown when Will Levis keeps it. Hurdles his way into the end zone, and we are tied at 14. Ten minutes to go in the second quarter in Lexington, guys. Thanks, Dar. We appreciate it. Looked like Levis was trying to see if he could fly. Yeah. There in that highlight. Turns out he can't, but he can't score and did. That guy's got a disregard for his physical well-being. How about that second offensive possession by the Gators? Dan Mullen come into this game. Look. We've been a heavy run offense, probably anticipating that out of the Gamecock defense. And they have stuck with that mindset, very aggressive in their downfield passing game. This is going to be a problem all night with the win. Jace Grisman, who struggled kicking field goals last week in Jacksonville, still kicking off, though Chris Howard the first out there to kick extra points. I asked Dan Mullen who was going to kick, and he said, I still don't know. Whoever goes out, if they make the first one, they get to keep going. If they miss it, the other guy's coming in. South Carolina will be at the 25-yard line, Alyssa. Guys, I've been watching the South Carolina offense on the sidelines after that last Florida offensive possession. Jason Brown put on the headset, talked to the booth, and then immediately walked over to his wide receivers group, talked to Josh Van earlier this week. He said he's very vocal with the group of receivers, certainly after he was named the starter this week, constantly following them around after practice, getting in their heads, wanting to understand what they're thinking as they're going through their routes. They looked really loose on the sidelines. You can tell a guy, he's played a lot of games. You know, coming into this football team, you know, the guy started, was in 18 games, started 12 of them. In his time at St. Francis, knows what it takes to rally the troops. It's a Quandre White hitting the hole hard in a first down run, staying on his feet in the Gator territory. One man to beat, and he's tripped up at the 20 yard line. That was a touchdown saving tackle by Jason Marshall, but White gets 54. Really well blocked at the point of attack. Actually had a free runner. It looked like Diabati was unblocked. Wanamaker missed. It didn't matter. Zaquandre White hit that hole with a full head of steam. How about Jason Brown? Number 15, the quarterback all the way downfield trying to block for his running back. And it's White again. And running so hard down to the 15-yard line looking for someone in that Gamecock backfield to explode. Yeah, you do. You give Brown a ton of credit for getting down the field, but a lot of credit to the true freshman Jason Marshall for fighting through that block in saving the touchdown. Second and four. It's a first down run inside the five. Running behind his pads for White. It's first and goal. How about White's vision? This cut right here gets in the hole. Watch him stick his right foot in the ground, finds that hole. Cuts it back to the left side, picks up another seven or eight yards. Now we see why they were so excited in that call about getting number 11 some touches. Three rushes for White, 71 yards here in the first half. This time they throw it, it's Van, and he's hit out of bounds right near the line of scrimmage by Kair Elam. Second and goal. That was a good job by Elam fighting through the block. Xavier Leggett out there. Not a big gainer that time to 
force Van out of bounds. How can South Carolina capitalize here on a red zone possession? They've struggled all season long. With 13 touchdowns out of their previous 25 trips. Brown is topside. It's Juju McDowell in the Wildcat. Touchdown, Gamecocks. Before the game, Shane Beamer said we would see the Wildcat and we might see old quarterback to carry on Joyner run it. Instead, it's the true freshman, McDowell, that gets the first crack at it. And now the Gamecocks lead 10-7 with 2.39 to go in the first quarter. How about the explosive plays? You get it going on the grounds, a Quandre White. Look like he might take it to the house. You get a touchdown saving tackle. This is a surefire way to get one of your explosive playmakers and Juju McDowell a touch just snap it directly to the guy play fake in the backfield and then get right downhill I can't say enough about this South Carolina offensive front the way that they have played so far in this game a much maligned unit this season doing an excellent job so far I, I'm not sure what to think so far here in the first quarter the Gators this year are known for running the football they've thrown it 10 times haven't run it yet South Carolina's 106 in the country in running the football and on four plays on that drive they get 75 yards and a touchdown you know, both of these offenses you can see kind of unload right that opening possession the flea flicker from South Carolina they go for it on fourth down you get it that drive stalls they come away with the field goal then you come right back great blocking up front and that ground game providing some explosive playmate. We'll be back with more football action in 10 seconds. Each offense throwing some haymakers here in the first quarter. Emory Jones Looked terrific on the last drive. Now 7 of 10 passing, 102 yards and a touchdown. One of the best running quarterbacks in the country. Hasn't taken off yet. He gives it to Naquan Wright, and it's a tackle for loss as Jordan Strawn was in the backfield with him. Well, we hadn't seen a handoff. Maybe we won't see another one for a negative yardage play after that. Look at Strawn on the backside. He did not bite on Emory Jones keeping that ball at all. He's not meant to be blocked, and he got down the line quickly for a negative yardage play. Gamecock showing pressure. In second and 13, Jones back to the air, throwing the deep ball. Caught inside the 20, inside the 10, Marcus Burke with his first collegiate catch. 51 yards for the true freshman from Jacksonville. How about Emory Jones standing in here on this one? Because he gets blown up. Brad Johnson gets a shot on him. But once again, you see a Gator receiver behind the secondary. The Gamecocks in the back end have been leaning on their toes. They came into this game wanting to stop the run. The Gators have countered beautifully with the big plays. Down to the 17-yard line, and right is going laterally. Flags are thrown. As Damani Staley and Jordan Birch were in the backfield, it appears this will be a hold on the Gators. Alex Moore is tonight's referee. Holding. Offense number nine. That penalty is declined. Second down. Keon Zipperer committing the foul, but. The foul will be forced. 10 yards from the previous ball. Uh, uh, Replay first down. I was about to say, I'm well, surprised yeah. you declined that penalty right there. Try to, with all the Gator problems kicking the field goal, you try to push them back 10 yards further. How about the catch from Marcus Burke? 61 yards. For his first collegiate catch, he had a couple of Gators like Trent Whittemore, 
in Jamarcus Weston out. Rick Wells did not play last week. He did warm up before the game, but he's limited. Henry Jones finding some new friends here tonight in Columbia. Back at the 27, and Jones will take off. So good at this. Gets down near the 17-yard line. Gets almost all that yardage back. Jalen Foster on the tackle. Jones, again, he leads all FBS quarterbacks with 5.73 yards per rush this year. Yeah, you see that. You know, the first one of few runs, right? But the first one that has involved Emory Jones. And you have to think they're going to be very judicious with his carries in this game. Came into it leading the Gators with 90 rush attempts. But he's their only real healthy guy at quarterback right now. He takes off again. And he's down near the 13-yard line where R.J. Roderick makes the tackle. It's a pickup of four. Yeah, you think of Army, Navy, and Florida? Yeah. For a percentage of rush attempts? We're talking about option offenses right there. Two of the top three. And then there's Florida. Of course, it's been quiet on the ground for the Gators so far. An empty backfield. Still that run threat exists. Already saw a QB draw, then a QB sne a sweep, rather, with Emory Jones. Doesn't have to snap it if he doesn't want to. And will not. They will flip the field. As we start the second quarter on what will be a third and six, already some fireworks for both offenses here in Columbia tonight. Someday you'll be better than your grandpa. You try. I don't know what to draw. It doesn't matter what, just a line. Throw yourself in. Don't be frustrated. Okay. Show me what you got there. Wow. Absolutely beautiful. Today, you want things to be on autopilot a huge increase in orders, and to be prepared for changes. I'll be right in. With IBM, you can do both. Bringing data together across clouds helps you modernize operations so you can keep those wheels moving. Nice work, guys. You're watching SEC Network College Football presented by T-Mobile. Matt Stinchko, Melissa Lang, Taylor Zars are with you in Columbia. It's third and six for the Gators. Inside the South Carolina 15, trailing 10 to 7. Florida had all kinds of problems against Georgia inside their 35-yard line last week. What does Emory Jones and the Gators do here on a third and six? They throw it to the end zone, and it's a laser too far in front of Jacob Copeland. Fourth down. Thought they were going to target shorter. He was the middle of the three receivers, kind of in that bunch on the left side of their offensive front. Instead, they're going to end up attempting this field goal. An impressive drive once again. Call it a drive once again on... The heels of a big play, fueled by the downfield passing game once again by the Gators. And here comes the attempt for Chris Howard. It's a 30-yard field goal try to tie the game. Just three seconds into the second quarter, and he's done just that. 10-10 tie game here in Williams-Brice. All right, every time we bring in my friend Chris Doring and Matt Stinchcomb to the same screen, all kinds of craziness ensues. Chris is one of the most beloved Gators of all time, including in the Zarser house, which he always likes to mention. CD, what do you make of what your alma mater has gone through through the first eight games of the season? Well, I mean, obviously it's been a, a frustrating run, Taylor, and I, I think you know, if we're realistic about it, everybody kind of ex uh, expected some regression this year. Uh, you lose Kyle Trask, a record-setting quarterback. You lose two first-round uh, receivers in Kyle Pitts and Kadarius Toney. You knew it was going to be a little bit of a step back, but I don't think people thought it was going to be this drastic of a step back. But the thing that I look at, Taylor, not only in this season but last season, you, know, you can look at the losses to Alabama. Those are okay losses. You can look at the losses uh, to even Georgia this year and, and, and make the argument that Kentucky's all right. But I think it's been the LSU loss last year as a 21-point favorite and this year as a 12-point favorite that have really frustrated the Gators the most. 
Juju McDowell gets past the 25 yard line. What is your thought, Stench, on what we've seen so far this year? Yeah, it's been surprising. I think a lot of folks coming into the season thinking that the Gators are the second best team in the East Division, maybe could contend towards the back end of the year with Georgia. Definitely wasn't the case. It seemed that way versus Alabama. A two point loss. You're a two point conversion away. There's a missed extra point in there. I'm just wondering. You know, from Chris's perspective, he's got to be fired up. You got to be fired up about this during about this downfield passing attack that Dan Mullen has employed. He's been really aggressive yeah, with the downfield play call. Good to see some explosive plays uh, stench. I mean, I think you, you look at um, the frustration last week. I counted maybe one pass over 15 yards that Florida attempted. I know it's a little different defensive uh, team from a skill standpoint tonight than it was last week, but good to see getting some some other receivers involved in the in the game plan a little bit. But I think they were trying to protect the young quarterback Anthony Richardson last week and, and with Emory Jones you feel a little bit more confident that he has the, the full uh, handle on the on the entire playbook available and uh, so tonight reaping the rewards of some more aggressive play calling. Second and ten for South Carolina after the incompletion for Jason Brown throwing it to the sidelines on the first play great coverage by the Gator defense. Handoff here does get gets less gets nothing Britton Cox on the tackle on the tackle for loss. Hey CD last thing last year they're in the college football playoff picture the Gators were through nine games had the heartbreaking loss to LSU one possession loss to Alabama. How did the Gators get back to competing to get to the college football playoff. You know I really don't think they're as far off as everybody likes to say. I mean I heard a lot of people talking about the talent gap between Georgia and Florida last week. It was a three nothing ball game with about two minutes and 20 seconds to go in the first half before the turnover barrage took place. But I think Florida obviously in college football right now it's about the quarterback. So what I want to see from Florida in a manageable schedule for the rest of the month is not only to win the games but see some development offensively figure out who your quarterback is going to be and start to build on that for the future so that fans can feel good about a potential eight and four season and what that might be a springboard to in twenty twenty two. Great extra effort by Nick Muse on that third and 12. Trey Dean made the tackle, but Muse's extra effort stench moves the chains. Yeah, and really, South Carolina, for the first time in their offensive possessions, struggled on first down, and they're able to overcome a third and 10 plus, something that they just haven't been able to do very often this year. You see Nick Muse once again getting another target at tight end. They're trying to get them more incorporated in the passing game. Harris. It's a first down run into Gator territory and he's tri tripped up inside the 30 yard line. Tyron Hopper made the shoestring tackle. It's a 40 yard pickup for Harris. Watch this stiff arm. He bounces this run outside. It's supposed to be an inside run. Just keeps Torrance away from his body and then turns the corner. Back looking healthy. He said Kevin Harris was just now getting to where he was kind of in top shape. And that seems to be the case on that run. 48 yards rushing for the Gamecocks. And the shovel pass goes to Muse. And he gets a couple. Chris Doring, we appreciate you, my friend. I will steal your notebook on Monday morning on SEC this morning, like I always do. And your chair, for that matter. Just love coming in. <laughs> love coming in there with. Peter Burns and Chris Doring uh, coming in with them on Mondays. We always look forward to that. Three yard pickup on that first play to Muse. Now this is Harris who gets inside the 20 down to the 18 yard line. A, a pickup of five on the play. Impressive to see what the Gamecock offensive line has done to the Gator front. Yeah, and part of it too, you know, probably wearing down a bit the Nick Gator front here in this game. We saw Daquan Newkirk lead the game earlier. Makes them thinner along that defensive line. And early on in this game, South Carolina asserting itself on the line. Brown's in trouble, gets rid of it, and throws to the sideline. Brenton Cox was in the backfield with Brown, forcing a fourth down. Brown just barely escaping Brenton Cox. 
An important throwaway, though, to say the least. And you see the mobility coming in handy. We talk about Zeb Nolan stepped in admirably, but not a mobile quarterback. And that time, Brown's ability to escape to preserve the yardage for this field goal attempt. Parker missed one inside 40 yards. Otherwise, he's been perfect on the season, kicking field goals and extra points. This from 35 yards, and it's right through there, and the Gamecocks are back on top. 11.31 to go in the second quarter. South Carolina's offense moving the football tonight. Someday you'll be better than your grandpa. You try. I don't know what to draw. It doesn't matter what, just a line. Throw yourself in. Don't be frustrated. Okay. Show me what you got there. In a world of the unexpected, customers expect simple and personalized. With IBM, you can do both. Automating IT processes across clouds helps you save time so you can make sure your customers' needs are covered. Thanks for dropping by. Thanks for the orange. This season, Allstate will celebrate every field goal and extra point made by participating universities by making a donation to the university's general scholarship fund. Thank you, Allstate. South Carolina with a 13 to 10 lead over Dan Mullins, Florida Gators. Who have almost exclusively thrown the football. In fact, they threw it in the first 10 plays. They possess the football tonight. Similar to what they did throughout last season when Kyle Trask was their quarterback and Kyle Pitts is one of the best tight ends in America. Florida will start at the 25 yard line and, and while the Gators have been throwing it the Gamecocks have been running it offensively so far in the first half running for 153 yards to just 45 passing and look at Florida's rushing numbers when you think about it really it's Emory Jones is the only one that has the two positive yardage carries the only handoff we've seen was to Naquan Wright and that was for a loss Jones has Malik Davis in the backfield with him. In the first play of this drive with 11.31 to go in the second quarter. Both teams 4-4 four and four on the season. And moving around the edge is Davis, and Davis doesn't get anything. Kingsley Inigbari running right with him. That's one of the best defensive front players in all of college football number one for South Carolina Kingsley JJ doesn't matter what he goes by he spends most of the time in offenses backfields you see that Kuyper's got him the number 14 prospect in this upcoming draft excellent pass rusher as well he forced a one yard loss there now swinging it to Davis out of the backfield is Jones and R.J. Roderick right there after a minimal gain of four. It'll be third and long for the Gators. And the negative yardage play is huge for South Carolina. It's what they've been lacking most of this season defensively. Even with the talent like Anikbari, they just don't generate a ton of those. It's that negative yardage play that sets up a third and long. Keep in mind, you got to back up at right tackle in number 70. And then Igbari is at the top of your screen. One on one ball to the secondary. It's incomplete. Marcus Burke, the intended target. It's fourth down. Great coverage by Cam Smith. Another aggressive downfield pass. And Igbari almost gets to Jones. Jones able to get that ball off cleanly. He's been pressured tonight. You think about that time he was trying to get the ball downfield. Jabari Ellis hit his hand, and that time Cam Smith, a good job of getting that head around and trying to play the ball in the air. And Shane Beamer has to call a timeout. Second charge timeout of the half, South Carolina. He was not happy. 
Shane Beamer obviously very engaged in special teams. This team getting a key stop and the offense for the Gamecocks getting it back. How's the painting going? Oh, it's going pretty good. Oh. <laughs> this is beautiful. Thank you, Grandpa. Yeah. Whoa. Every week, millions of fantasy football players need to be confident they're making the right decision. What's up with CeeDee Lamb? How does ESPN help them make smarter trades and set the right lineup? Does this look bad? I don't know. I'm not that kind of doctor. IBM Watson. By analyzing everything from player stats to expert opinions, Watson cuts through the noise to deliver game-changing insights. Boomer Bust says C.D. Lamb is going to boom. To keep ESPN at the top of the fantasy sports world. He's good. What can Watson do for your business? SEC Saturday Night, presented by T-Mobile, is brought to you by the Peloton Tread. Run faster and get stronger like never before. And new Coca-Cola Zero Sugar and Wendy's Hot and Crispy Fries. Try the best combo ever today. Gamecocks ready to fly in Columbia tonight with the lead over the Gators 13 to 10. Shane Beamer had to call timeout because of a personnel issue on this fourth down punt for the Gators. After his defense was able to force the punting team and Jeremy Crawshaw out on the field. Josh Van standing back at his own 29 yard line. Crawshaw low kick that will bounce and be killed inside the 25 at the 24 yard line. 49 yard punt. No return, Alyssa. Yeah, you guys were just talking with Chris Doring about the state of the Florida program. Well, for South Carolina, it's obviously different. We opened the broadcast talking about that. But when it comes to Shane Beamer, the energy level is unmatched. I mean, I, I want what he's putting in his coffee every single morning, to be honest. Josh Van said a couple weeks ago during a game, he got so hyped up, he punched him square in the chest. And Van was like, yeah, I'm hyped. But coach, like, don't knock the wind out of me. Relax. Yeah, and you actually said, is it OK if I tell that story? And Shane said, yeah, you can tell it. I, God, I felt so bad about that. Almost injured our best receiver. But that just gives you an idea how fired up Shane Beaver is to be here. Brown, under pressure, throws the deep ball. He's got a receiver, and it's caught inside the 30. What a catch by Josh Van. And Shane Beamer gives him another shove. He just wouldn't have it. He didn't have this mobility, the escape ability. Back to the line of scrimmage, he spins out. Looks like Bo Nix there for a second. I mean, how about the hose on Jason Brown to lay it out there on target? That ball was 45 yards in the air easily. And he's throwing it against his throwing arm, rolling to his left. We're going to take another look at this. It's a 50-yard completion from Brown to Van and Josh clearly South Carolina's primary target tweaked his groin last month and is still trying to get back to 100 percent good job of high pointing that ball he's possessing it there I don't know what we're reviewing. Uh, looked to me like. To me, it looks like he had firm control of that football throughout this catch. You see Shane Beamer here running into the picture, too. He came in, and we did, Alyssa just talked about how he almost injured him a couple of weeks ago. He, he came and gave him a shove at the end of this play in celebration. I don't really see where the ball makes contact with the ground ever once he high pointed that football. Should be an easy call here for the officiating crew. After we do, we're really on the field, stands. First down, South Carolina. Now, Stinch, we saw this great ball that Jason Brown throws to Josh Mann. And the outstanding catch. Alyssa was talking about how Shane gets a little too excited at times. 
<laughs> he, he, he tempered his enthusiasm here, but he still comes yeah. on the field and gives a little shove. Shoving him around for crying out loud. Great play. Let me beat you up real quick. <laughs> what a play. Kevin Harris into the game at the Gator 26 yard line. This is a throwback and it's a quandary white with the ball on the ground and he's able to get on it back at the 38 yard line. Clearly they wanted white to throw that ball too, but he couldn't field it. It's a loss of 11 and he was eager to get this ball out of his hands right orbit motion. Obviously clearly a backwards pass. And white is lucky to get back onto this football. Jeremiah Moon nearly with a momentum swinging takeaway for the Florida Gators. So now second and 21 for the Gamecocks back at the 38 yard line. Brown steps up, fires across the middle, throws behind Van, who makes a good catch down at the 23 yard line. It's a pickup of 13. And that time, a good job pressing up into the pocket but unfortunately if this ball's out in front of van it's a first down instead it spins him around he can't keep his footing otherwise look at the opportunity in front of van here catch it outside the gator which run off the gator defender to the far side of the field he's got a chance to turn it up and pick up a first king Cox just one of four on third down wild snap Brown fields it right at the line to the end zone. Touchdown, Van. Just watch the line of scrimmage here, Stinch. It's the 24-yard line. See if he's past it. All he needs is a body part behind the line of scrimmage. Oh, yeah. That's a touchdown. And once again, the escapability of Jason Brown to extend that play. Boy, has he been impressive in the first half. Parker White's extra point slides through there, and it's 20 to 10 Gamecocks. Jason Brown connected with Josh Van on a 50-yard completion earlier in the drive, and it culminates with Brown running out of the pocket and finding Van wide open in the end zone. Where have you been all season, Jason? Gamecocks on top. Today, you have to manage expectations and lower wait times. With IBM, you can do both. Unifying apps and data across clouds helps you predict and manage supply chain issues for your business and for your customers. Let's talk Cash App. Want to invest a dollar in a chunk of stock? And another? And another? Until you've built a whole portfolio. You can do it with Cash App. Because Cash App lets you do more with your money. South Carolina's offense has looked sensational so far. 274 total yards, 142 rushing, 132 through the air. Jason Brown finding Josh Van a couple of times on that drive. And Van's had a big game so far. The 50 yard completion reception. He has over 100 yards receiving here in the first half. And from the seven, it's Malik Davis. Out past the 25. And stopped at the 30-yard line. Jason Brown in his first FBS start after four years playing for St. Francis College. Has been terrific. And Emory Jones off to a good start for the Gators, too. Both of these quarterbacks able to find their targets downfield. This isn't a kind of tic tac your way down the field passing offense for either team. Gators got off the bus throwing the football. Embry Jones has been able to hit some bombs downfield for the Gator offense. Have to keep it up. Down 10. He's going after 
shorter on the first play. Shorter can't make the catch. Marcellus Dial in coverage. Alyssa, how's Emory Jones handling the start on that sideline? Yeah, I've been watching him over the last few minutes. As we said at the beginning, the whole team dealing with flu-like symptoms, Emory included. Dan Mullen talks about how cool, calm, and collected this guy is. That's basically what he's looked like. Pacing up and down the sidelines, keeping his hand warm, hands warm, getting on the bike, talking to his O-line. He looks calm. Second and ten. Hands it to Pierce. And Damian fights for five, maybe six yards. Nice extra effort from the fifth-year senior. It'll be third and short. You know what some of these guys could use is the pizza that Alyssa brought to us <laughs> tonight. This is her town, Columbia. She knows where all the good spots are, and we're going to be eating like a champion here in just a few minutes. First, though, it's a third and four for the Gators who have struggled on third down tonight. Jones moves the chains. Nice strike up to the 44 yard line. Shorter again. Nice third down conversion there by Emory Jones. Patient. That right there, right where Damian Pierce kept him clean just long enough. Shorter just sits down. 6'5, 230 pounds. That ball just got there in time. Five catches. For this junior from Monmouth, New Jersey, 92 yards. On a reverse, it's Copeland. Haven't called his name much tonight. He gets a couple as Jalen Foster runs with him. A great job by Jalen Foster. We were talking to Clayton White, the defensive coordinator for South Carolina. We said, who are the most productive guys on your defense? He named two guys, J.J. Nickbari, former five-star, Jalen Foster, a transfer from Gardner-Webb. He has been a takeaway machine, and that time a quick diagnosis on the end around. Second and eight on an option play. Jones dives ahead as Foster's in the backfield with him. The fifth year senior who leads the nation with interceptions gets a tackle for loss. And that time Foster got upfield so quickly forced this decision earlier than Emory Jones wanted to make it. You see, didn't get a good block by Michael Tarquin right there on the edge. He had two unblocked defenders in that option look. You can only pitch off a of one. Great job by Jalen Foster defeating the block at the point of attack and getting the negative yardage tackle. Once again, we've seen one from Enig Barr and now Jalen Foster forcing the Gator offense backwards. Third and 10 for Florida. Jones barely gets it off. And he throws wide of shorter. Fourth down. Darius Rush in coverage. Well covered by Rush. Gave up a touchdown throw earlier. Looking for shorter once again. Got away with a little tug. Did Darius Rush. Looked like that left hand. Grab the shoulder pad of Justin Shorter. No call. We haven't seen a defensive pass interference call tonight. They're letting him play. Crawshaw again. Kicking to Van. Runs away from it. It's down at the 16 yard line. Gamecocks have three wins against the group of five in Vandy. This is a different story. Today, you have to manage expectations and lower wait times. With IBM, you can do both. Unifying apps and data across clouds helps you predict and manage supply chain issues for your business and for your customers. Not again. For the gifts you won't forget, the Mercedes-Benz Winter Event. 
All right, Regents halftime report coming up here shortly. You get the four of us. We'll share what's going on in Tuscaloosa, where it is not easy right now at the half for Alabama. All kinds of excitement in Fayetteville. What do we make of Florida's performance here in South Carolina's offense? Oh, South Carolina? Yes. We didn't even know who was going to be the starting quarterback until late in the week. Josh Brown proving to be quite the uh, option. Jason as well, his brother, guys. <laughs> Josh. <laughs> Uh, let's go to Zaquandre White from Jason Brown here. Is Zachary Carter in the backfield? It's a tackle for loss, a two yard loss there on the play. Second down and 12. I I'm really impressed with this guy and what he said about how much he loves being a Florida Gator in a tweet he sent out after the, after the Georgia loss last week. He you don't see that very often in this day and age. You see a lot of disgust and frustration, and I want to play somewhere else. Zachary Carter said, through the ups and downs, I am a Gator forever. Florida fans should be proud of that. Not, they shouldn't be proud of that, though. Got him on the hard count. You get a negative yardage play on that first down. Get a free five yards. It's always these inside defensive Offside. linemen. Defense number 55. Jumping into the neutral zone, causing reaction by the offensive player. Still down. That was on Valentino. Here's the tweet I was talking about. I love the University of Florida no matter what as a true competitor. I want to win every game we play, but sometimes we fall short. This logo means everything to me. Love y'all Gator Nation. That's the kind of leadership that you got to have in your locker room. Winning seasons or difficult seasons like this one it becomes invaluable to have a mindset just like that one. Second and seven Brown. Steps up and it's a completion past the 35 to Trayvon Kenyon. Sophomore picks up 18 more. Another game Cox first. Jason Brown in the pocket. How he manages this pocket. So he presses up, he slides, keeps his eyes downfield. Throws a catchable ball. Was it out in front? It wasn't. But what a great job. Never panics, didn't flush, found a target downfield. And gets the completion. Well, just the poise that he has demonstrated in this game. His numbers are terrific with 150 yards passing, looking for more, and dumps it off. Nice catch by Muse into Florida territory inside the 45. Another good play fake, too, in that offensive backfield. And you're able to just sneak the tight end out. I think Muse all by himself. Yet another target coming into this game. Really, he was only getting looks largely on third downs every once in a while in the red zone. You can tell it has been a point of emphasis. Marcus Satterfield said, we got to get some looks to these tight ends. Back to back plays where they do just that. Brown was four of five for 45 yards in the opener against Eastern. Illinois and mop up duty. That one's batted down incomplete. Two weeks later, he played one snap, an incomplete pass against Georgia at the end of the game. That didn't play again for five weeks. And he played the end of the game in College Station last week after Zeb Nolan's knee injury and completed eight passes for 84 yards. Found Kenny in for a touchdown pass. Did throw a couple of interceptions. I think. Even the coaching staff wasn't sure what they were going to get tonight. What they've gotten so far is the best half any South Carolina quarterback has played in the nine games all season. And offensively, they have not looked this way all season long. Hand off to White. Tried to bounce it out, doesn't. There's a flag down, and did Zach Carter grab the face mask? It looked to be the case. Let's see. To Quandre White. He's helping out the officials. As is Zachary Carter. Wasn't me. It never is. Offensive line guys never seen a holding call. Defensive players, they never <laughs> grab the face. No, that's, mask, that's two. I've, I've noticed on this drive. I just want to make sure. Personal foul. Face mask. Defense number six. This penalty is 15 yards from the previous spot. And it was an automatic first down. Let's watch this with Carter trying to make the tackle here, and he did. It wasn't egregious, though. 
no distinction for it anymore. If it gets up there, it's up there. He didn't, you're right, he didn't grab and hang on. But he got enough of it to warrant the flag and a free first down and a half. Stinchcomb saying that all defensive linemen can make, can commit those kinds of penalties. Okay, Just a okay. few plays ago, accusing interior defensive linemen of jumping off sides time after time. That wasn't an accusation, that was an observation. They jumped off sides right there. It seems fair as we see the officials. Commuting there, right there on the 30 yard line. And Mullen and everyone else wondering what this is about. Evidently, Alex Moore says, let's play some football. And they moved the chains. They were just shy about a yard of where they spotted. The chains were set up. The ball ended up being spotted a, a yard further into Gator territory. Already over 300 total yards for the Gamecocks in the first half. And White gets a few more, a few more. They only had 15 total yards through three quarters against Texas A&M in their last game. It's a huge difference game to game. You think about they had the bye week. First three quarters, as you see, it, 15 yards. First half tonight, they piled up 312. Some through the air, some on the ground. Big explosive plays. To me, the biggest difference has been the productivity on first down. To get it to second and manageable. We talked to Marcus Satterfield. He said, I just want to nudge the ball forward. After last week's performance of the last time out versus AM, boy, they have far exceeded that goal. Back to the ground. White has nothing. And he just takes what the defense gives him, and now the offensive line shuts wow. him ahead for a couple extra. Those offensive linemen, they'll help you out in a pinch. It's perfectly legal this year. Go in there and just push that pile. And once again, it's those yards that they just kind of leak out at the end. And that was another two yards, two and a half yards, just from that push of the scrum. Eventually, that adds up. And that time, White kind of had to wind his way back over there. A great effort with that leg drop. Let's see what Marcus Satterfield calls here on a third and three. The transfer from St. Francis at quarterback. Winding that clock down and on the third and three fakes the run and it's batted down by Brenton Cox. It'll force another field goal attempt. It's a second pass deflection. I think on this drive by Brenton Cox. Sean Wanamaker like he was going to try to cut it there for a second Cox played the block well got his hands up they're just going to sneak that ball out quickly try to get the conversion instead Parker White in there for this field goal attempt it's a 40 yard attempt for White and he hooks it but barely in there and it's the third field goal for White in the first half and the Gamecocks lead is 13. With 113 to go in the first half. South Carolina has been impressive on offense tonight. Dan Mullen's got 73 seconds left in the first half. All three timeouts. Remember the Gamecocks get the football first in the second half. It is time to eat like a champion. Alyssa Lang, this is your town. Take it away, my friend. We, um, we've got some pizza from your spot. The Village Idiot, right? Yeah, you teased it on the broadcast. You said we were eating pizza, and I already started getting blown up from South Carolina folks that if this isn't Village Idiot, uh, we're disowning you. So like the good college student I was, I'm going to eat my fat Hawaiian from Village Idiot, idiot Colt as all good pizza is. Stench got, um, what's the name of Stench's, Alyssa? Big, beady, meefy, beefy, and something, I don't know. A bubbly, I, I think there's know. a bubble in there somehow. I felt like it just Not tried sure Stench, though. Um, yeah, the, the Glenn family who owns it, great, great people. Gators don't get back to the 20. 
Is there a village idiot in that family? I'm, I'm wondering who's it's the beefy, looking. meaty, big beefy, meaty pizza is what you got. I got what you get, Taylor. The freshman 15, That's which right. that, that cuts deep, by the way, because that happened. <laughs> I think you got redshirted. You put on the freshman 30, didn't you, pal? <laughs> <laughs> We're messing around. Village idiot, though, guys, a staple here in Five Points, especially if you need to, you know, mix in a water and go eat some pizza after a Saturday night in Columbia. That's your spot. Man, delicious. Appreciate them. Have so much fun with this segment. Uh, Alyssa, all, Alyssa, when Alyssa's in charge of the food, she nails She's it. She's great. She has nailed it. Emery Jones. In trouble, gets out of the pressure and throws it away. So you got Gamecocks all over him in the backfield. Jabari Ellis and Aaron Sterling were back there, second down. You know, something to keep in mind, too. The South Carolina defense has been excellent with takeaways, and specifically interceptions. 11 of them on the year. And you think about the way things devolved towards the end of the first half last week. Somewhat aggressive. You're throwing the football inside of a minute. It ended up costing the Gators. I don't know if you want to get hyper conservative, but that has to be in the back of your mind. You want to concede a takeaway. Just a minute left in the half. Jones in trouble again, gets out of there. Now will take off there and he is. loses the football. It's up for grabs and the Gamecocks got it. It's a touchdown for Jabari Ellis. It looked like Aaron Sterling punched it out and Ellis was right there for the scoop and score. The Gamecocks came into this game a 20-point underdog. They lead by 20 in the first half. A back-to-back -back plays. The Gamecock defense got pressure on Emory Jones. This time, you see him running with that ball loose, like he might throw it at any time. And Aaron Sterling just retracing from his pass rush. The big man Jabari Ellis is right there to scoop it up and get it in the end zone. Watch him hatchet it out. Number 15 by Sterling there. Jabari Ellis, he gets the escort. Almost tripped on R.J. Roderick. And once again, an end of half sequence with a nightmarish end for the Florida Gator. Now 46 seconds left here in this quarter. Back-to-back -back weeks, though, could not have gone more poorly, as you see. I believe that's the long snapper. Matthew Bailey. Sophomore from Florida. What a first half for the Gamecocks and Ellis getting the touchdown there. You know, Shane Beamer mentioned Jabari and Aaron Sterling on the call yesterday to us because we were asking him, and that Texas A&M game was brutal. It was brutal to watch. It was brutal to play in, to coach in. What has the off week been like? And he said, you know what the off week has been like? We've had upperclassmen like Jabari Ellis say, can we practice longer? Yeah. Can we? We're not going hard enough. We need to be out here longer, have more competition between the defensive line and the offensive line. And Shane said, well, I've realized everybody wants to win all the games and wants to rush the process. He said there's nothing wrong with the culture. And that's quite clear. Florida picks it up off the carom. And Davis gets out past the 30-yard line. Alyssa 
quite impressive to see what Shane Beamer's done, team has done in the first half tonight. Yeah, but he gives a lot of credit to the players as well when it comes to that culture, that competition level. And I know Stinch loves this. The offensive line, the defensive line, especially competitive, but particularly the D-line. Shane told us that the defensive practice field is a little further away from the locker room than the offensive practice field. So when they do one-on-ones in practice, they go best two out of three. And if the defense wins, they make the offense walk all the way over to the defensive practice field to have the post practice meeting. Now, that means everyone has to walk a little bit longer to get back to the locker room, but it doesn't matter. It's all about principle for the D guys. Yeah, I wish you could just see Stinch's face while you're, you know, all you're saying this, Alyssa. Like, just see anger in his face for an offensive lineman to have to walk that extra yardage. Emory Jones is out of bounds at the 34. It just doesn't make sense. You know, everybody loses. I don't get it. Maybe switch fields or something. Either way, it's bragging rights. I get it. The big piece of it, though, was the enthusiasm's been there. The effort has been there. They've lacked the execution. Especially offensively, we have seen that certainly here tonight. A big swing of events on that previous offensive possession. Can the Gators salvage something with the last 34 seconds of this half? Malik Davis doesn't have much place to go. Sterling and company Tonka Hemingway in there to make the tackle Hemingway has had some ankle issues this year starting to come on What a first half for the Gamecocks 316 total yards They limit the Gators to 18 rushing yards Force a turnover and take a 20 point lead to the break Coming up at halftime, you can watch the live performance of the mighty sound of the Southeast on SEC Network Plus. Start streaming now on the ESPN app. Jabari Ellis with the defensive touchdown just a moment ago to cap off the scoring. Shane Beamer's team gets the ball in the first and the second half, and he's standing by with Alyssa. Coach, over 300 yards of offense so far in the first half. What do you make of Jason Brown? He's playing his butt off. So proud of that kid. Uh, um, just making plays out of the pocket, just poised, confident. He's uh, really happy for him and the success he's having. We've got a long way to go. We're running the ball, which helps him as well. Uh, we got to be able to continue to, you know, hit some big plays on offense, and they got an explosive offense as they've shown, and we got to come in there and have an even better second half. You talk about playing complimentary football. Your defense has come up with some big plays too. How do they continue that? Yeah, they're awesome. Uh, you know, they hit us on a couple deep balls where we should have had a post safety in the middle of the field. It should have been a dead play. Uh, but we've been preaching to them all week that if you look at the, our two teams, turnover margin wise, we had a great advantage, and we showed that there. So we got to keep it going. Thank you, Coach. Yeah, it's nice to do these halftime interviews where I'm winning. It's been a while. <laughs> he's, he's getting used to this position, isn't he? Three wins against the group of five, a win against Vanderbilt, and a big lead against the Gators going to the break. Now let's send you back to the studio with our friends Dari, Benjamin, Chiz, and CD. Uh, Taylor, thank you, Mike. Welcome back to SEC Network College Football presented by T-Mobile. Jason Brown in his first ever FBS start has guided the Gamecocks to a surprising 30 to 10 lead over the Florida Gators as we get ready for the second half. With Matt Stinchcomb and Alyssa Lang, I'm Taylor Zarzer. Uh, did anybody see that coming? <laughs> no. Yeah, no, that wasn't the, the way anyone anticipated. It certainly wasn't as scripted from the Florida Gators perspective. Could have started out any better for South Carolina, though, and with yet another new face at quarterback in Jason Brown. You would have never known that this guy has been sitting three deep on the roster. His ability to extend plays, to get the ball downfield to the playmakers that they do have. Josh Van showing up big, and then once and again, Working that pocket, keeping the play alive. There's Van again in the end zone. Both those plays on the same drive. They've gotten big plays out of the ground games. The Quandre White getting going. It has been incredibly impressive. And the first time 
South Carolina has scored on their first five offensive possessions since November 23rd of 13 versus Coastal Carolina. And the second half kickoff by Juju McDowell is taken back to the 35 yard line. Let's check out our first half stats brought to you by Zaxby's. I think the most surprising one is that first one on the left for the Gators, just 18 rushing yards for a team that's in the top six in America coming in. And just, just as shocking as the South Carolina offensive output is you're right, Florida right now so abbreviated. Why is that? Well, as you pointed out, they've run the football so well, but the difference is after the play, a sportsmanlike conduct, number 15 of the kicking team, hits first. This is a 15-yard penalty added to the end of the return. First down. This is a rattled football team at the moment. Alyssa, what do you make of what Dan Mullen and the Gators are going through right now? Yeah, guys, he was short and sweet coming out of half. I asked him what the message was. He said we have to emphasize individual plays. Guys have to step up and start making plays. I said, any adjustments on either side of the ball? He said, nope. So expect the same lineup we saw in the first half. Yeah, he's he's been quick with everybody and abrupt through this trying time right now. And it's a quandary white into Gator territory on the first play of the second half. No players met with the media this week. We met with Coach Mullen yesterday and Coach Mullen alone. It's been a frustrating time. Last week he was asked about recruiting. He said we'll talk about that once the season is over with. I don't know how much it really matters what he says right now. It's what his team does on the field. That's right. I mean, it's game day now. And so you've got a half a football to try to dig out of a 20-point hole. And again, White, he gets the first down, down to the 42-yard line. The Gamecocks' ground game has been so effective so far in this game with 174 rushing yards now on the night. That was the number when we put the stats up from the first half that jumped out to me. As diminished as the Florida run game has been is how pronounced the South Carolina rushing attack has become. White with a burst of speed gets down to the 39. And part of the reason why is White is the healthiest he's been all season. Kevin Harris, who led the SEC in rushing last year, he checks in for White now. He's looked terrific in the game, too. Harris has 59 yards rushing. White just went over 100 with that carry. That's a big part of it. You know, they have been hampered all season long. It hasn't just been the transitions at quarterback, but getting that offensive front stabilized and the running game going. Florida itching. Put some pressure on Jason Brown. Harris. Doesn't get much. If Jason had a great career playing in the Northeast Conference for St. Francis, the Red Flash, and, and led the Northeastern Conference in passing and in touchdowns. In fact, he set in a conference record with 3,100 yards passing and 28 touchdowns two seasons ago. So we already know that he can sling it around. I guess the question was, could he do it at this level? He's certainly been aided not only by his legs, but the legs of the running backs here at South Carolina. He's ready to throw on a third and six. Stands in there, and that's a dangerous pass. It's incomplete. He was looking for to carry on Joyner. Jason Marshall flashed in front of Joyner. Fourth down, and that means Kai Kroger is going to come onto the field for the first time tonight. That time, Jason Brown, a little bit of pressure from Jeremiah Moon as he got rid of that football. As you pointed out, Taylor, this is the first open-ended possession for South Carolina all night long. After the kick return and the penalty, Todd Grantham's defense finally forces a punt and gives it back to Dan Mullen's offense. This one dies near the 10. And it'll be down at the 11. Tomorrow, we'll have the Women's Soccer Tournament Championship match for you right here on the SEC Network and the ESPN app. Number one seeded Arkansas squares off against number two Tennessee and two Eastern from the Orange Beach Sportsplex in Orange Beach, Alabama. Tomorrow, SEC Women's Soccer Championship. That's close to Mobile, Alabama. Isn't Very it? close. 
is where Mobilians go to vacation, Stitch. We'll see how Emory Jones starts this second half. It was a rocky finish with the scoop and score there towards the end of the second quarter. Handoff goes to Malik Davis, doesn't get much. He gets two. Florida threw on their first 10 plays on offense, and it worked, too. Went down the field, scored a touchdown, kicked a field goal. But since they started running the ball, surprisingly, they haven't done almost anything. In fact, they've given the other team, South Carolina, seven points. On second and eight, Davis again. And Malik is ahead maybe to the... 15. It'll be third down. The difference here, you know, you think back to that first half. Gators, as we mentioned, got out throwing. And they were throwing downfield, taking shots, taking advantage of the South Carolina mindset. Now, you know, deep in your own territory, in a third and five plus, empty backfield for Emory Jones. And can the Gamecocks get home? Can they get pressure with four? This has been the problem for Emory tonight. Just one of five, takes off, no place to go. Tripped up by Jalen Foster. It's a three and out. Second time we've seen quarterback draw in this game, and Foster gets home. They ended up bringing five that time. Leave no doubt on that third down. He's a complete player. You said to me earlier, did you say that Jalen Foster leads the nation in interceptions? I said yes. You said, well, I want to say it too, because it bears <laughs> repeating. He has five on the season, but that's not all he's about, clearly. He's been in the backfield several times tonight. This goes off the side of Crawshaw's foot, but it does take a gator bounce. And Dan Mullen's team is struggling this season and tonight. Let's talk Cash App. Want to break into Bitcoin with as little as $1? And send it instantly with ease and no fees? You can do it with Cash App because Cash App lets you do more with your money. Here comes that rainy day feeling again. And soon my tears, they will be falling like rain. Let's take a look at our hometown connection brought to you by T-Mobile, where each week we highlight a team's connection to towns across the SEC. Jason Brown and his teammate E.J. Jenkins went to high school together in Fredericksburg, Virginia, at Chancellor High School, went to the same college together in St. Francis, and then transferred to South Carolina together as well. Brown always looks for Jenkins. In fact, the coaching staff has laughed at the fact that he targets him so often. He hasn't looked for him yet tonight. But boy, has Brown been terrific. He throws the deep ball here. And Van points it, but he's out of bounds. Did not get a foot down. Jason Marshall running with him, second down. Probably good that that ball was as deep and as outside as it was because you can see Jason Marshall's got an excellent position on the throw. Would have been a heck of a catch, no doubt. That ball's in the field of play. There's a decent chance it goes the other way. Something that South Carolina's done a good job protecting the ball, but that's a zero gain on first down. Brings up second and ten. Round four straight incompletions. Lloyd to the ground. And Marshawn Lloyd into Gator territory inside the 30. And a horse collar tackle is going to add 15 more. This is no surprise. The Gators have gotten a steady diet of counter. LSU exposed it a couple of games ago. Georgia started the game. Back-to-back -back counter plays. We've seen some in the first half. This is their biggest game. Foul, illegal horse collar tackle. Defense number 22. This penalty tackle goes into the bowl, and it includes an automatic first down. Lloyd was clean into the line of scrimmage. The first Gator to touch him. 
30 yards downfield was Torrance. You never want your safety having to drag your back, a back down from behind. And then, of course, you get another first down and a half worth of yards at the end of that play. Gators have struggled fitting that counter run over and over again. Gamecox now inside the Gator 15. Struggled scoring touchdowns this season in the red zone. 13 of 25 coming into the game and have kicked three field goals in the first half. Lloyd going laterally doesn't get much there as Trey Dean runs out of bounds with him. You know, Lloyd was expected to be a great true freshman yeah. tailback last season, but in his second day of college last year in August, he had a serious knee injury. He didn't have his first career touchdown until the last game against Texas A&M, as you see Todd Grantham there. But Lloyd is starting to show the signs of what the previous coaching staff saw in him when they recruited him. Second and ten after no gain. Brown facing pressure. And he'll throw to the sideline incomplete to Van covered up by Marshall. That's disappointing if you're South Carolina offensively because you're basically max protect right there. Lucky they did not get a holding call. They're on the right side of the offensive front. To me like. Spun a gator around there trying to get some pressure and suddenly. Jason Brown has five consecutive incompletions. And what will be a third and ten. From the Gator 14. One of his favorite targets, or at least the Carolina offense. The flag came in. I was going to say to Kerry and Joyner. False start. Offense number 54. Five yard penalty. Still third down. Javon Gwynn. Right guard. One of the guys that. Shane Beamer talked about saying, look, let's start practice with nine on seven inside run drill. Let's get physical. Let's set the tone in this bye week that time. With a near early start digging the hole even further on third down on this red zone possession. We have to get to the four. To move the chains. Quick throw to Van. Looking for blocks, but Gators all over the field. He just steps out at the 20 yard line. Rashad Torrance ran all over the field to make sure the fan would not go anywhere. You get an A for effort. I mean, he ran what? I'm going to say close to 40 yards to gain, what, one maybe? You get back to the original line of scrimmage even. White's three for three tonight. He's 12 for 13 on the season. This will be from 39 yards. Gamecox lead is 23 over the Florida Gators with 8.04 to go in the third. Do the Gators have something left in the tank? Today, you want things to be on autopilot huge increase in orders, and to be prepared for changes. I'll be right in. With IBM, you can do both. Bringing data together across clouds helps you modernize operations so you can keep those wheels moving. Nice work, guys. This football season, no matter where you are or how you pregame, we are all Tailgate Nation. This football season, buy four participating items and save $50 off Fanatics gear at wearetailgatenation.com. SEC Saturday Night, presented by T-Mobile, is brought to you by new Coca-Cola Zero Sugar and Wendy's Hot and Crispy Fries. Try the best combo ever today. And B, it's what's for dinner. See, it's Military Appreciation Day here in Columbia, South Carolina. You saw all the active military that was on the field that is in the, in the stands. Also played TAPS 
at halftime to salute all of those that served our country and gave the ultimate sacrifice. So incredibly grateful for each and every one of you that have served our country so that we can watch games like this on a Saturday night throughout the Southeastern Conference. Amen. Well said. What do the Florida Gators and Dan Mullen do down 33 to 10? They've given up 23 consecutive points. It was a tie game in the first quarter. Malik Davis from the six. He is dinged down at the, the 23. And that's where the Gator offense will start, Alyssa. Yeah, guys, when it comes to SEC Saturday, we know that all week we're counting down the minutes, we're counting down the seconds until we get to watch our teams play. That's why Wednesday nights, it's a nice way to get ready for the upcoming weekend. Out of pocket is on 7 o'clock Eastern time on the SEC Network. Myself and Andrea Carter taking you all around the conference, the ins and outs of all of our teams, getting to know your favorite players better. We had Damian Pierce of Florida on the show a couple weeks ago. That dude is hilarious. Florida fans know that y'all are great I, the chemistry the two of you have is the Gators are offsides is is fun to watch I mean they bust each other's chops more than you and I do yeah it, it gets a little brutal oh they gotta mop it up blood on the floor in the studio I mean they go after each other how about Alyssa's get up she looked like the head ball coach yeah they, they had but she did it's a good it was a good costume the, the hair was rather gray that's true. HBC didn't have a whole lot of great. It looked like it, really. There he is. We saw him earlier. We there did. We is. saw we saw Jerry, his wife, and the head ball coach here at the game tonight. They're in the Gator Athletic booth tonight. Keon Zipperer making the catch from Emory Jones, a pickup of nine to make it second and manageable. Well, it's kind of gone away from the Gator offense with those big explosive plays. When you think about that early those early possessions. Hitting shots downfield, off play action. Catching South Carolina with their eyes in the offensive backfield. And they're allowing receivers to get behind them as you see the Gamecock defense trying to get organized. Damian Pierce hasn't run much tonight. He gets up to the 31. It's going to be third and a couple. And we've seen a couple of times tonight where not a lot of attention or respect to the quarterback pull in some of these run looks where Emory Jones could maybe pull the ball and keep it. We've seen a QB sweep. We've seen two QB draws. And that's pretty much it from the rushing at the quarterback spot. Gators are just one of six on third down tonight. If they're going to stay in this game. This would seem to be the play. Jones will not get there. Zach Pickens says no. Yeah, you motion to empty. Even though you've got that heavy formation up front, you motion to empty, you get a defense thinking, all right, you know, so maybe they're thinking pass, and instead you get the QB run. The Gator offense staying on the field. Looked to me like Pickens was able to beat Josh Braun, who was in there for an injured Ethan White. Fourth and one from the Gators' own 32. Handoff. I don't think he got there. Damani Staley hit Pierce. Turnover on downs. Six minutes in the third quarter, and I get it's just a yard. Inside your own 35, hadn't been a great night running the football. And South Carolina said, we're not going to have a whole lot of runs on us. And look at that, right down hill, the hill right now by Damani Staley. It was his penetration that made that play. And Zach Pickens is there to clean up. I think Dan Mullen is worried his defense can't get off the field tonight. And he felt like you have to keep possessing the football to stay to have any chance to come back in this game. South Carolina's only punted once and scored on six of their seven possessions. And now they have the ball at the floor to 32. Kevin Harris hits the hole hard. 
inside the 20 into the red zone again. Kevin Harris with a couple of nice broken tackles. Diabate had a chance at him, missed tackle, coming into it. Well, Florida didn't really have difficulty. They only had 37 missed tackles coming into this game. Like something that they've been plagued with, but hard running by these Gamecock ball carriers. And they've been able to run through some would be tackles repeatedly. And you saw Florida's inability to run the ball tonight after being so effective all season long. It's Harris who gets up to the gets down to the 16 yard line. Led the SEC with over 1,100 yards rushing. First team all SEC last year. It's 10th in school history with 21 rushing touchdowns. He's dealt with several injuries this year. Finally looks healthy tonight. You can see South Carolina They're trying the inside, the interior portion of that Gator defensive front. Down a body in Daquan Newkirk. And Zachary Carter come up separately with the flu. Harris puts his head down and Mahmoud Diabate makes the tackle at the 12. It'll be third and short. See South Carolina over the ball quick to that bunch formation to the right side. And a third straight carry for Harris. Down to the 10. It'll be fourth down as Antonio Valentino makes the tackle. We'll see what the Gamecocks yeah, they're going. decide to do here. Up 23. Shane Beamer says bring in the big package. Trey Jones, the big fullback, coming back on the field. It's interesting. Shane Beamer, you could see the field goal unit was ready to come out on the field, and he immediately put his arms out like, oh, hold on. Go ahead and go for it here. So you see an aggressive call by Dan Mullen in minus territory. Now Shane Beamer. So Quandre Wright follows Trey Jones. First down, Gamecocks. Another attitude run. The head coach for South Carolina is fired up. Inaugural season hadn't had a lot of great moments really when you think about it. They had a walk-off win or two Look at this You get a puller over there in front you Got a 300 pound fullback blowing up in there as well That's a bold call stench when you're up 23 that shows you believe in your offense to get a yard It's first and goal inside the 10 Brown throws it over to Bell. Bell slips a tackle. Touchdown. a team that needed comeback wins against East Carolina, Troy, and Vanderbilt that are up 30. Parker White makes this extra point. Well, Gamecocks with a statement drive. A fourth down. You go for it. And you pay it off with a touchdown. With Bell in the end zone. And the Gamecocks are rolling. In a world of the unexpected, customers expect simple and personalized. With IBM, you can do both. Automating IT processes across clouds helps you save time so you can make sure your customers' needs are covered. Thanks, Dropbot. Thanks for the orange. The tougher the tire, the easier the escape. ESPN.
home of the college football playoff. Run it. It's coming up at the end of the year. Can't wait to see who the four are that will make that. And then the national championship afterwards. Florida was so close last year. And now they are so far away. Down 30 to the South Carolina Gamecocks. And they'll get the ball at the 25 yard line. And there's a bunch of reasons why the Gators have, have struggled this year. The, the players that they lost to the NFL draft, the injuries that they have sustained. But Stitch, nobody saw this coming. No, nobody did. I mean, coming into it, obviously, Florida, a heavy favorite, even coming after, off of that defeat uh, at the hands of the University of Georgia. But South Carolina has struggled mightily throughout the year. You just talked about the comeback victories. You have a walk-off touchdown from Zeb Nolan coming off the bench versus Vanderbilt, a team that has struggled pretty pretty heavily throughout this season as well. And I don't think anybody anticipated this level of difficulty. And I think, you know, the variable that was hard to assess was the impact that Jason Brown has had on this offense for South Carolina. Jones throws, and Marcus Burke, who's made his first two career catches, gets 13 more. That's a first down for Dan Mullins Gators, his 13th year as a head coach with a 102 wins. His team was 8-1 and one when they played LSU last year and lost that game with that crazy shoe throw that led to a last-second LSU touchdown. Absolutely could have been a one-loss team going into the SEC championship game against Alabama, and they played Alabama hard yeah, they did. for 60 minutes in a one-possession game. Emory Jones, it's a completion to Jaquan Frazier, Jaquavion Frazier's into South Carolina territory for 16 more. A couple of nice plays there for the Gator offense, back to back. You know, you're aggressive, hyper aggressive right there in negative territory. Give your team a short field. And you could have played for half. They're late in the second quarter. That's 14 points. They went the other direction. And there has been no running room between the tackles really no running room at all when a handoff has been involved in this game the south carolina gamecock defense and they said this clayton white was like look we're going to play the run we're going to stop the run shane beamer said it too that is what we're going to do we'll stop it with numbers if we have to and they have but by and large they have won the line of scrimmage as well just with those down front players they've done a good job of keeping the point of attack Florida just has 29 yards rushing before this Jones first down run. We haven't seen Emory do much of that tonight. He gets 10 yards, and to your point, Florida was sixth in the nation running the football coming in with over 242 yards per game, and they're at 39 yards rushing after that one. And now, you know, his eighth carry, the leading rusher for the Gators is Emory Jones. That's not that surprising, given the way he's performed this season. 25 yards. Pierce leaves the backfield. Jones throws a strike down to the 26-yard line where Rick Wells makes his first catch in a couple of weeks. Jalen Foster on the tackle after nine. Wells been used as a possession receiver, caught a pass in each of the first seven games, did not play last week against Georgia due to injury. And this week, he's one of the players that not only has been dealing with a injury but also some head cold issues you can see the impact though that Emory Jones can have on the offense as a runner comes right back it's a nice throw I think it's part of him getting into rhythm on the option he gives it to Pierce Pierce has got no place to go he loses yardage Cam Smith and then Jordan Birch finished it off the Gamecocks are coached up on the option looks there has been nothing doing. Probably the second time we've seen it in this game. I think they've both resulted in big negative yardage plays by the Gamecock defense. All Gamecocks in Columbia tonight. In a world of the unexpected, customers expect simple and personalized. With IBM, you can do both. Automating IT processes across clouds helps you save time so you can make sure your customers' needs are covered. Thanks, Rob. Bye. Thanks for the orange. Freezing cold. Blazing heat. 
Rain-X premium silicone wiper blades are engineered to withstand the most extreme conditions. They last two times longer than traditional wipers. If Rain-X premium silicone wipers survive these conditions, clearly they'll last in yours. Rain-X, outsmart the elements. Find Rain-X silicone wipers at these retailers. Oh, there's are some proud parents up in the boot, up in the suite. Frank Beamer and Cheryl Beamer watching son Shane Beamer, South Carolina Gamecocks up 40 to 10 on the Florida Gators. What an incredible man he is, having so much success as a head coach of the Virginia Tech Hokies. It's third and four for the Gators as they start the fourth quarter with Florida at South Carolina's 30 yard line. Emory Jones throws a first down to Zipperer and Keon is inside the 10. It'll be first and goal Gators. Standing wide open that time. Sold out at the line of scrimmage to South Carolina. Zipperer on the receiving end. A nice run after the catch by the big tight end. Best offensive drive we've seen in quite some time, really since the first quarter by the Florida Gator offense. Similar formation, got that bunch to the left. Jones is thrown for over 240 yards and a touchdown. Throws to the end zone to the back pylon and it's caught by Wells. Touchdown. Fifth year senior from Jacksonville with his third touchdown reception of the season. Trying to get the Gators back into this thing. A couple of pre-stop motions. He went from that bunch to the left, motion all the way across, and he motion right out of the backfield. And Wells on the receiving end of that touchdown catch and a little bit of life from the Gator offense here in the second half. And the extra point from Chris Howard is through and it is a 23 point game with 14 14 to go. Gators trying to climb back into this thing. Today, you have to manage expectations and lower wait times. With IBM, you can do both. Unifying apps and data across clouds helps you predict and manage supply chain issues for your business and for your customers. Okay, JV, good game. You're gonna be on tonight? Yeah, definitely. Cool, see you later. Pass it, pass it! Yes! yes. Ah. You wanna play one more after this? Yeah, one more. Got him! Yeah! <laughs> Keep it down! No, you keep it down! Sorry, neighbors. I can't stand mine either. It's the road to the championship. Brought to you by Mercedes. We take a look at the other scores going on in the Southeastern Conference. Georgia blowing out Missouri today, 43-6. And JT Daniels played some football today. How about in the, that? In the second half, in relief of Stetson Bennett. Texas A&M. Wow. How about the defensive performance? 20 to 3 over Auburn. And we're going to have to go to Dari Noka here in a minute because those two in the bottom right, yeah. especially the wow. one in the middle bottom, well, Alabama up six. It's kind of shocking. Dari, give us some updates, my friend. Comeback moment supplemented by Aflac. Aflac it is. Arkansas trailed Mississippi State at home in the fourth quarter until Dominic Johnson takes it in in the closing minutes and then a missed field goal from Bully gets Arkansas the 31-28 win. Guys. It was crazy. That happened right before us. And then you got Alabama up 20-14 to on LSU with 2.40 to go. And then Kentucky of 45 42 or trailing excuse me to Tennessee so and all kinds of nut, nutty things happening in the SEC but I think this is 
the most shocking of all the games that were played today, so far at least. So far, I was about to say, I mean, there, there's two maybe in the making. As you pointed out, number two team in the country versus, uh, we'll call it a lame duck LSU football team. But this one right now, the way it has transpired, nobody saw it coming. Literally, nobody saw this. And there's still a quarter yet to play. As we just mentioned, Gators able to drive down the field and punch it in. Jason Brown has been terrific. Running game has been great. Juju McDowell got a couple on that last play. I think the offensive line, though, maybe deserves the most credit for pushing those Gators around up to the 30 yard line. And, and Alyssa, it's always important to scout the other team, but maybe just as important to scout yourself. Yeah, this week uh, they made some changes. Marcus Satterfield and Shane Beamer decided to have the defensive analysts and defensive scouts not only scout Florida's offense, but their own offense and turn in reports based on what they found to try to help this offense operate better from the bottom up in every single position group. The assistant who told me that on the field tonight said, yeah, it looks like it's working. Maybe we'll do this every week. Yeah, he pointed it out too, you know, the change at quarterback they needed to simplify some things, fewer pre-snap motions. They had a snap, a center snap, hit a motion man in the leg. Last time out versus AM. On third and six, Brown flushed out against his body, just has to throw it to the bench as Jervon Dexter was chasing him down. It's a three and out for the Gator defense. So the Gator offense gets it down there, punches it in, then the defense gets back out there. A, a listless defensive performance now showing a little bit of life. It will get some pressure. This is the first three and out of the night for the Gator D. Ty Kroger punting for only the second time. Xavier Henderson back deep for Florida. Kroger with that Aussie style. It's scooped up by Henderson, which saves Florida some yardage, but nice special teams tackle there by RJ Roderick. All Gamecocks. Today, you want things to be on autopilot a huge increase in orders, and to be prepared for changes. I'll be right in. With IBM, you can do both. Bringing data together across clouds helps you modernize operations so you can keep those wheels moving. Nice work, guys. Resident Evil, welcome to Raccoon City. We need a team to contain this. If Raccoon City falls, who knows what's next? Go, go! A rocket launcher? Resident Evil, welcome to Raccoon City. Exclusively in movie theaters, November 24th. SEC Saturday Night is presented by T-Mobile, the leader in 5G, America's largest, fastest, and most reliable 5G network, and in part by new Coca-Cola Zero Sugar and Wendy's Hot and Crispy Fries. Try the best combo ever today. His attitude is simply contagious. Shane Beamer, and he, he has that positivity with everybody, 44-year-old First year head coach, played for his dad at Virginia Tech, then coached for him too, went on to coach at Georgia Tech, Tennessee, Mississippi State, here for Steve Spurrier, Georgia, and Oklahoma before finally getting this opportunity. And by the way, congrats to Shane and his wife and their children. Bought their first house and moved into it in the last week here in Columbia. <laughs> A lot of changes this week. Henry Jones throws to the sideline and Jacob Copeland makes the catch tackle made by David Spaulding after a pickup of seven Shane be the first to tell you that it is going to be a big time rebuild here in Columbia and certainly through eight games you've seen that so far this season but he's very proud of the culture that's been created and I asked him if anything this season has surprised him if he was prepared for all of the ups and downs of the season second and three for Jones and he'll take off and get the first down up to the 45 yard line Cam Smith on the tackle and I thought it was interesting what Shane said he said he knew there'd be some ups and downs this year but we can still have a winning season beat our in-state rival and get to a bowl game yeah all those goals still in front of him 
And, you know, there was some disappointment, too. You know, he said, you know, going into the Tennessee game, the way that they had prepared, they fully expected to win that football game. You always do. But they felt really good about it and went the other way on them quickly. Emory Jones throws, and Cam Smith picks it off. The redshirt sophomore from Blythewood, South Carolina, the top cover corner, according to defensive coordinator Clayton White, gets his first interception straddling the sideline. Watch this. Pretty clean pocket. And clearly a miscommunication. I don't really know what Emory Jones was thinking on this throw. Because Jacob Copeland had already broken his route back towards the middle of the field. Cam Smith was the only one that was in position to make that catch. It wasn't a scramble drill. They're still in the pocket. Another takeaway by this Gamecock defense. That is a heck of a head cover, too. Cam Smith yeah, is, was, yeah. is wearing tonight. Jason Brown throws on the run and throws in front of Xavier Leggett, second down. I'm glad you said that because I thought, man, that's a really that's aggressive a, that's die aggressive. job. Yeah, I didn't know. Was very creative. But then I see that logo on there. Either way, another pick by this defense. Leading the conference, one of the best in the country, and takeaways in the air. Got 11 picks coming into this game. They lead the nation in turnovers game with 19. It's kept them in some games. It's, it's been the difference in some of their victories. Quandre White bounces it out, stays on his feet. Up to the 40-yard line. Alyssa, it'll be third down. We were talking about Shane Beamer and the difference he's made in his attitude here in Columbia. Yeah, I couldn't believe you glossed over the best part of his moving story, moving into the new house during the bye week. He said that before they were living in a house near Five Points, with like one couch, a chair, a mattress on the floor in each of the bedroom because they weren't going to buy any furniture until they got into the new house. I was like, oh, that's basically every student living house near Five Points, a chair, a mattress on the floor. <laughs> I mean, I, I know what that looks like in Columbia. Is, is Shane Beamer also a grad assistant on this staff? <laughs> he, he, he was. Class? He was. Brown perfectly manages the play clock. And he's going to be tackled at the 37. Jeremiah Moon, it's a two-yard loss. So after Emory Jones throws the interception, the Gator defense does its job in getting the football back. But also affords South Carolina opportunity to bleed more clock. Didn't gain much in field position, but they'll put the Gators back further than where they were. You can see Dan Mullen after that takeaway, of course, visiting with Emory Jones. A guy he's got a ton of respect for, there's no doubt, trying to figure out what happened on that throw. Kroger kicks it to Henderson, who calls for the fair catch inside the 25. The Gators need a miracle. Down 23 to Shane Beamer's Gamecocks. In a world of the unexpected, customers expect simple and personalized. With IBM, you can do both. Automating IT processes across clouds helps you save time so you can make sure your customers' needs are covered. Thanks for dropping by. Thanks for the orange. I got these two great tennis players. All we need is a club. Nobody's taking that bet. Venus and Serena going to shake up this world. What do you want out of this? I want to win the world as many times as anyone's ever won it. You want to show them how dangerous you are? Will Smith is King Richard. Rated PG-13 in theaters and on HBO Max November 19th. Let's look at the five-star play of the game brought to you by Yellowwood. How about the Gamecocks defense tonight, Stinch? Right at the end of the half, we're saying, man, it could be dangerous, and sure enough, Aaron Sterling pops the ball out from Emory Jones. The big man Jabari Ellis is standing there. Ball's sitting right at his feet. 
He took it into pay dirt. Number 99 with a defensive score and a defense that has feasted on turnovers all season long. That time they're able to convert it directly into points, set the tone for a second half that has gone almost entirely South Carolina's way. Florida down 23. Emory Jones threw an interception on his last attempt, and he goes down for a sack on this play as Jordan Birch has started to emerge and turn into that big time prospect he was coming out of Hammond High School here in Columbia. He sets up this move nicely. Gets him upfield and then spins inside. The worst in a spin move from a guy that can get upfield quickly. You get your kid in that kick slide, you're working backwards, and then all of a sudden, boom, back inside. It's hard to recover. Really athletic play by one of the most heralded recruits out of the state of South Carolina. Loss of four, and this is incomplete looking for Burke. Covered up on the play by Darius Rush. We got a hand on it, third and 14. Stinch, there's still 840 to go in the game. A 23 point deficit. Not much it, urgency, right? It isn't insurmountable, but it certainly feels like it with the way Florida's offense well, is going. Yeah, it hasn't been. You know, there was a couple of, you know, obviously that drive a time ago. But you also think, you know, you're sitting in a three possession game. Jones under pressure. Sacked by Rush. The boundary corner, you bring pressure. He just never feels it. He was already rolling out. A little short rollout, never felt it. It was a right field read. They brought it from the boundary side, the near side. Rush is able to get there quickly. It's been a long night. He hits a couple of nice throws early on in this game. Big shots downfield. But otherwise, it's been a very long evening for Emory Jones and the Gator offense. Crawshaw from his own end zone. And Van calls for the fair catch at the 43-yard line. It's a 47-yard punt. Gamecocks are all smiles tonight. To run is to feel. That's why Allbirds is focused on natural materials with supernatural abilities so you can feel something real everywhere you go. You know, if we take that wrapper back to the store, it can be recycled into other stuff. Well, I want my wrapper to be a hang glider! How about a park bench? Dad, you need to think bigger. Recycle your specially marked Crunchy Bar wrappers in-store now. Coming up next, SEC football final as you cover the biggest stories of the day and breakdowns of all the games. Dari Noka hosts along with Gene Chizik, Chris Doring, and Benjamin Watson. It's immediately after our game right here on the SEC Network and the ESPN app. One app, one tap. Some head-scratching results tonight. I mean, this one especially with South Carolina scoring the most points it's ever had in the Florida series, with this being the 42nd meeting. The way the Alabama LSU game unfolded tonight. As Harris gets ahead to the 49 for five more. Tennessee, Kentucky's been a thriller down to the wire in Lexington. Arkansas, Mississippi State was that way today in Fayetteville as Mississippi State missed a field goal at the horn and Arkansas survived. We had the Hugh Freeze Bowl today <laughs> yeah. in Oxford. Rebels. A, A M defense looked terrific against Auburn. Man, didn't they? I think the only thing that was as expected was what Georgia did to Missouri. That snap. Brown fields it, though, and still gets the first down. <laughs> it's been that kind of night for 15, hasn't it? I'm honestly, I'm, you're hard-pressed to think of a snap that did not go well for Jason Brown. I mean, no, he didn't always complete balls downfield. Look at me saying, he yeah, said, that's yeah. my fault. Yeah, 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 guess what, Taylor? Don't say bad snap. That was my fault. Eric Douglas with a clean snap. Brown just didn't field it cleanly. 
about everything else, right? You know, they told him, they challenged him. Shane Beamer said, they're like, look, he got here and we said, you need to, you need to get leaner, man. You got to drop some pounds. So he looked out there and he said, just about every day from my office, he's out there running on his own, trying to get dialed in physically. He lives right outside the stadium, by the way, in, in some apartments. And here is Harris. That's the guy we saw last season lead the SEC in rushing. 22 more for the junior from Hinesville, Georgia. Now the Gamecocks have two running backs with over 100 yards rushing tonight. And a truck stick here at the end for Rashad Torrance on the back end of that run. Didn't get much help from his fellow defensive Gators on that play. To run out this clock or milk it as much as possible here. Harris gets down inside the 20 down to the 19 yard line. We were talking earlier about Shane Beamer saying all of the goals we had coming into the season are still realistic to have a winning season to get to a bowl game and to beat our arch rival our in-state rival and South Carolina is going to be five and four after this game a win away from bowl eligibility. They play at Mizzou next Saturday at four Eastern on SEC Network then they host Auburn and then they host Clemson. Now I think the ESPN FBI tabulated these percentages before tonight's game must have. Yeah. Well, two of those three at home right so you go on the road at Mizzou. This final two at home here in Williams Bryce and just imposing their will. A second ago, we look at the schedule. And how about Vershawn Lee, the left guard, running in front of Harris here? Nice escort. He's just looking for work. And I'm just going to keep running until I hit somebody. How about a safety in Trey Dean? He couldn't have been expecting that. A second ago behind Shane Beamer was offensive line coach Greg Atkins. He's been around this league a while. Boy, he did a lot of work with his guys over that bye week because this offensive front has not looked like this all season. Harris gets down to the five. And part of it is number 20, Kevin Harris, he gets healthy. Lloyd starts running like they expected him to. The Quandre White rounding into form. Maybe things are just starting to shape up right when South Carolina really needed it to. This is a was a pivotal game coming into this. You know, how is the season going to finish? Both these teams coming in at 500, four and four each, with games to play. Of course, South Carolina. Taking advantage of that inflection point. Here's Marshawn Lloyd, and he gets tackled in the backfield. Nice explosion by Chris Bogle there. The junior from Fort Lauderdale. It's third down. Hadn't seen a ton of those negative yardage plays. And you know, Todd Grantham, defensive corner, he's still out there. Look, he's on, look, look, watch the QB pass. He's talking about the poop, right? Yep. Watch him boot out. It's a piece of it too, right? You, know, you just go back to it. They've been healthy at quarterback, and that guys that can run a whole lot. It's not like Jason Brown is is out there like Cam Newton. He's done a great job of extending plays with his legs. It's been the difference on some of these drives. Brown and the Gamecocks are just going to call timeout here. We were talking about Todd Grantham, the 55-year-old defensive coordinator that played at Virginia Tech. And then coached for Frank Beamer, Shane's dad, while Shane was playing for the Hokies. These two know each other well. This is his fourth year at Florida. It was a, at Michigan State, the Colts, the Texans, the Browns, the Cowboys, Georgia, Louisville, Mississippi State. And he's been around. This has been a tough season. He's been scrutinized. The whole Gator program has been scrutinized this season. And, and this might be the most scrutiny after the way this game has unfolded tonight, South Carolina running the football for 281 yards, 456 yards in total, and a series high 40 points so far.
Yeah, they're a rough night. That's a massive understatement, to say the least. And from a unit that struggled last season but was covered up largely with the offensive output. This year, you know, a couple of weeks ago, you're going, you know, this might be an underappreciated defense. Miss Kyrie Elam. Mitchell Miller's missed nearly the entire season. But for now, this has been one of their toughest nights on the defensive side of the ball. Jadarius Perkins comes up to make the tackle on Lloyd to force fourth down. Back at the 10 yard line. Lord is going to fall to, to four and five on the season stench. They have Samford next Saturday in the swamp. Then they're at Mizzou the week after the Gamecocks play in Como and finish the season against Florida State. And again, that was coming into the day. Those numbers are going to change. We get a chance to win. I don't know how much it swings for next week, but this final two and even at Missouri. Connor Bazelak, their starting quarterback, didn't take the field today. Marshawn Lloyd gets tripped up down at the three, and Trey Dean prevents another touchdown. So with 1.48 to go in the game, Gamecox will turn it over on downs, and Florida will get the football back. Well, Stinch, we come to these games each and every Saturday, and we think we have some idea of what's going to happen. Uh, did you have a 23-point Gamecock cushion? Yeah, no, no, that, was, that wasn't in the uh, that wasn't in the equation. Didn't anticipate this one at all. You know, thought that there was a chance. The coaches certainly did that there could be a little bit of a spark. You know, with Jason Brown coming in there, but they weren't really certain. But I think that it's it's more of a, a convergence of a lot of different variables, especially offensively for South Carolina. Well, part of it was the work they put in in that bye week. Afforded them a little bit of time to get Jason Brown some more reps. But also the help that they got at running back. I mean, all those things showing up at just the right time. And of course, you look at Florida, too, coming in this thing. They've been banged up. Richardson not available. There's no doubt that that impacted the Florida play calling tonight. There's no doubt in my mind when you've got a run-centric offense that is powered by the quarterback position. Anthony Richardson was cleared, but he was in concussion protocol. There's no way that they called the game the way they normally would have. You know, give South Carolina credit. They came out here and they played their best game of the season, and they did it with the third different quarterback. Good point about Richardson, too. It, it, Coach Mullen said before the game, if, if he had to play, he could. If something happened to Emory Jones, he yeah. could play, but he wanted Emory to go, go the whole way which is what he's done. And you mentioned the injuries. This is a team that's sick, too. I mean, a couple dozen yeah. people this week that have been dealing with, with head colds, and that, that's been a problem. It, it doesn't excuse the overall performance by any stretch as Jones throws behind Burke. No, it, it does explain some of it. Uh, there's no doubt, and it's a reason, not an excuse. And at the same time, you don't need one. You know, this is the SEC game you know coming into it and Dan Mullen himself even said it's like you know it's an excellent South Carolina football team and that's certainly what the Gators got here tonight they got the best version of South Carolina that they've been all season long no question Jones throws wide of, of shorter now third down and and Shane Beamer would certainly agree with you about that and they were lucky to beat East Carolina they were lucky to beat Vanderbilt. We were here and we watched a, a dog fight against Troy yeah. for, for three plus hours. This is a team that absolutely could be two and six right now instead of four and four. But this clearly is the defining moment in Shane Beamer's first season. There's no doubt. And as he pointed out, with opportunities still in front of them to embellish on even this performance and their record. Damian Pierce runs out to the 40-yard line where he's tackled by Jalen Foster. Pierce, one of those guys that's been battling the flu this week. A 23-yard pickup for Pierce on the play. While well, Dan Mullen doesn't have anything to smile about, over on the other sideline, Jason Brown 
as a night he will never forget. Starting his first game for the Gamecocks as a fifth year graduate transfer and leading them to victory. Jones throws into double coverage. Incomplete to Burke. He hasn't taken his helmet off yet. He just wants to enjoy all of this as he's hugging two at a time. Well, that's smart because when you've had a night like his, when you've been kind of the, the spark for an offense that's been kind of smoldering along, you leave that helmet on because guys always come up. What do they do? They pop you in the head, man. Congrats. Here's a here's a shot to the head. Might as well have that helmet on to protect yourself. Stay in the concussion protocol. And that's not a guy that just subbed in. No. That's a guy that should be the starting quarterback the rest of the way. Pierce on what could be the last play of the game gets into Gamecock territory. South Carolina beats up on the Gators tonight. 40 to 17 led by a fifth year transfer quarterback that had a night he'll never forget. Well, you asked it earlier, Taylor. Did you see this coming? No, no, and nobody did. The Gators didn't see it coming either. This kind of came out of nowhere. South Carolina folks, the coachings, the coaching staff, the players, they would say it came out of the bye week, the work that they put in there. Shane Beamer, all smiles on the field with Alyssa. Coach, you talk about all the work that this team puts in, all the competition during practice. What does this mean? Everything. Uh, just so happy for these guys. They, uh, they're out there. Um, unbelievable. For the last two weeks, all we've talked about is just competition and competing. And and I told you guys yesterday, like, you worry when you come off a game like Texas A&M, going into an off week, how the mentality is going to be. We had an unbelievable week of practice the last two weeks, and um, and uh, and they competed. Uh, the best two weeks of practice that we've had all season. Uh, I told you guys, I'm trying to shorten the practices last week in an off week to give them a break, and they're coming to me wanting to practice longer. So they deserve this. So happy for them, and, and hopefully this is just the, the start of something special. What does this mean for the start of Jason Brown's career here at South Carolina? Unbelievable night. I mean, we told our players last night in the team meeting, I, I talked about what he did in his first start ever at St. Francis. And I think he threw for 300 yards, was the conference player of the week. Uh, so we told him Jason was going to play well. Now, did I know he was going to play that well? No. But what he did is he did a great job of, uh, we did a great job of running the ball and helping him out. Defense got turnovers. Just a unbelievable night to be a Gamecock. Yeah, how about some of your defensive guys, Jabari Ellis with the scoop and score. You were going nuts. What does that mean when your defense is scoring points to help your offense? It's huge. And it was, you know, part of the thing tonight that we knew we needed to do to win the football game was win the turnover margin. And, and uh, uh, we did that. When you score on defense, that's hard to overcome. And just so happy for these kids. They work so, so hard. And to come out here and, and play and win a game in an environment and against a really, really good Florida team. So whatever the narrative is about them, they got really good players. And uh, they were out there tonight. So fantastic night. So proud of our guys. And, and uh, we're going to enjoy the heck out of this one. I know you said you wanted to emphasize running the football today. All four of your guys ended up doing that. What did you think of the way you were able to move the ball? Uh, it was uh, oh, no, jump the gun. Uh, um, they did great. Offensive line was physical. Tight ends were physicals, physical. Uh, all those guys got in the action. And, and we've got to continue to build on this and, and keep getting better from this. Uh, for, as, for as awesome as a win that was, there were a lot of plays that we left out there, too, that, that uh, uh, made it even closer than it needed to be. All your family flanking you after this is over. Your parents are up there watching. Whoa, how are you going to celebrate this? Unbelievable. It's what it's all about. And Coach White, our, our defensive coordinator, said it on the headphones. This is why we came to Carolina. And this is just the start. So we're, we're getting back to competing for championships soon here. And we got an unbelievable group of recruits that are here at this game that saw this. Hopefully a lot more watching on TV. And, and uh, just very, very proud. Thank you, Coach. Congrats. Thank you. He mentioned the whole Beamer family. There's a hug for his wife, Emily. We just saw Sutton and Olivia, his daughters behind him, his son Hunter, and there's a hug for Frank. What a night for the Beamer crew. His mom, Cheryl, over there as well. It's the signature moment for Shane Beamer as a head coach, beating the Florida Gators 40 to 17 tonight. I want to thank everybody in our truck that did an outstanding job.
tonight. Thank all of you for all of your hard work. Thanks to Alyssa Lang on the field. For my man Matt Stinchcomb, I'm Taylor Zarzer. Good night from Columbia. Dari Noka, an SEC football final, is next.